Vaccination milestone reached across Latin America and the Caribbean. Lead investigator gives explosive evidence in bus corruption case involving three former UPP ministers. And efforts intensify to revive interest in the board game of Wari. Those stories begin right now. Local Evening News is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening, you're tuned to the ABS Evening News. Thank you so much for joining us, whether you're joining us on air or online. My name is Garfield Burford. Welcome. And I'm Sequoia Servia. Thank you so much for joining us. Director of Education Claire Brown has rubbish suggestions in some quarters that unvaccinated students have been neglected by authorities. That's right, and our, our top story this evening is the government's vaccine mandate remains in effect for students eligible to take the vaccine. Unless those students have an exemption from the vaccine, they are not allowed in the physical classroom and are now learning remotely until they get the jab. Arcel Charles Jr. spoke with the Director of Education this morning on the heels of fresh pushback to the policy. This country's education director has rubbished the promulgations in certain sections of the media that unvaccinated youth who have not yet returned to face-to-face -face learning are being deprived of an education. Vaccinated students were allowed to um, to face to face were allowed to access face to face instruction. Unvaccinated students, still students of this country, remain in the learning environment, but the remote learning environment. The students are still a part of a registered part of whatever the school is. Claire Brown describes how teachers continue to ensure those who remain in the remote learning environment are in fact still being reached. Many of our teachers have gone above and beyond the call of duty and so they have used uh, the Google Classroom and they have tried to do synchronous um, teaching. Not very easy to accomplish asynchronously. They try to reach students and not every student has um, a device, not every student has connectivity. But through printed learning packages, then we continue to engage our charges. He maintains the ministry is concerned about all the nation's children and will continue to provide access to education for all. If we just allow students to be out there on their own, learning gaps that were already created by remote learning will only get wider and wider and wider. And allow me to to offer a, a profound gratitude to our principals and our teachers, those persons who are on the front line of education delivery, who continue day after day to exert themselves to ensure that schools run. For ABS News, I'm Ursula Charles Jr. Thanks so much, Ursula. Meanwhile, the education director has confirmed the deployment of 99 substitute teachers across the nation's schools. They have been placed in early childhood education centers primary and secondary schools. We would have put two of those teachers in the early, um, early childhood department. We would have put 46 of those teachers in the primary department. And then we would have put another 51 in the secondary school. He says this fills almost 90% of the gap created with the unvaccinated teachers on unpaid leave in line with the government's vaccine mandate. 99 persons have been deployed out of the 109. The 109, that number was the number when we did our first check as to uh, teachers who remained on unpaid leave. It, it numbered in the uh, public school primary and secondary school system, it numbered 109. Mr. Brown has also assured these teachers were deployed following a rigorous recruitment process and insists their academic qualifications cannot be questioned. The people that were selected are persons from the database, are persons who qualify for teaching, who satisfied the academic qualifications for teaching. So some people had degrees, others uh, would have had A-levels and so on. Um, reports that I would have gotten received from education officers, administration, that the substitute teachers are uh, doing a marvelous, marvelous job. 
Still on matters of education, the Antigua and Barbuda Humane Society today donated coloring books to all primary schools on the island as part of the activities to mark the celebration of their 30th anniversary. Uh, make the first contribution of a coloring book that the Humane Society has produced as part of our 30th anniversary. We were registered in Antigua in 1991. We have an animal welfare, an animal shelter, sorry, and donkey sanctuary in the Bethesda area. And we work not just with animals and care not just about the welfare of animals, but most importantly, the welfare of the community. President Executive Director Karen Corbin highlights why the Humane Society chooses to produce a coloring book for the young minds of our society. We have learned over the years that there is a very definite link between animal cruelty and domestic abuse and other forms of human violence. Virtually all very serious violent offenders have histories of animal cruelty. We consider it very important to try and reach young people to encourage them to have empathy and to be kind to animals. Deputy Principal of the Jennings Primary School, Mary Ella Shaw Miller, welcome to the donation. I want to say a very big thank you to the Antiguan Barbuda Humane Society for such a timely donation. There is no doubt that we are living in unprecedented times. And for the past two years, going on three years, our children have suffered greatly. And uh, the younger ones, especially the preschoolers and the kindergartners, they have not been given the opportunity to interact as much as they normally would. So this book, in my estimation, would go a long way in helping to bridge some of those learning gaps that would have occurred over these past few years. Moving away now from issues of education to healthcare, Antigua and Barbuda's COVID-19 death toll has increased to at least 108, with one more person succumbing to the virus as of the 13th of November. Meanwhile, active cases of COVID-19 have fallen to 61, as the country recorded seven new cases and 44 recoveries between the 13th and the 15th of November. You're looking at the two dashboards aggregated for the period. The country's total case count now stands at 4,129. 11 of the infected individuals remain in hospital. Two patients are experiencing severe symptoms. Two are experiencing moderate symptoms. The other seven have mild symptoms. Meanwhile, 54,221 people are now fully vaccinated against COVID-19. A further 5,867 people are partially vaccinated. The Pan American Health Organization is reporting an important milestone. Half of people in Latin America and the Caribbean have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. And nearly 3.5 million COVID vaccine doses are due to arrive in our region this week. PAHO Director Dr. Carissa Etienne says many countries remain far behind. Less than 20% of people have been fully vaccinated in Guatemala, Jamaica, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And vaccination coverage remains in the single digits in Nicaragua and Haiti. Dr. Etienne calls for the work to continue in getting the region immunized. Well, meanwhile, Antigua and Barbuda will soon be part of a major consultancy being arranged by the World Bank. Matters now of the port and logistics. According to port manager Darwin Telemac, the consultancy focuses on regional connectivity. Because Antigua is well positioned to operate its port at a level that outpaces most of the island, the World Bank is focusing on Antigua as the driver for this consultancy. Telemac indicated he was to meet with World Bank consultants and the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development today. It's called UNCTAD. And we will begin the dialogue on shaping that consultancy, putting together the relevant uh, stakeholders that will be uh, spoken to, the areas of focus that we should, uh, we should look at, as well as showcasing all the pieces of this beautiful facility that we have just constructed. Crucial discussion is therefore taking place today with uh, UNCTAD as well. The port manager believes the consultancy is timely and the World Bank is excited as the port is being redeveloped. This is what the World Bank has been looking for. 
this, I believe, is going to be the impetus on leading forward with the type of connectivity that can energize this agency and probably reshape the future and the plans and the outcomes for this port. Staying with matters of the port and logistics because strategic meetings in the United Kingdom also focused on addressing the void created by the departure of one shipping line from this region. Port manager Darwin Talamak tells us one of the lines looked at was GEST. We spoke to them by phone. That is something we intend to do rather quickly. Uh, I now have a mandate to reach out uh, and ensure that we uh, regroup and look for additional opportunities, particularly since we've lost uh, some direct calls by uh, some of the lines serving Antigua and the region. Mr. Telemann, they're telling us well the discussions with Geest. He was, of course, coming back uh, just recently from the UK where he had several meetings. He also says that he received leads that a few lines in Miami in Florida in the US are interested in speaking with the Port Authority. I think right now in the region, there's some excitement around what we have built here. And our effort now has to be to find the right people, sit with them, discuss the possibilities, uh, do some very intense negotiation and hope that we can pull off adding some uh, connectivity and capacity to our berth here. Now on to matters of the courts. Lead investigator Superintendent Lisbon Michael is among witnesses who testified Wednesday in the ongoing bus trial in the High Court. Former UPP ministers Harold Lovell, Dr. Jackie Quinn and Wilmoth Daniel are facing a count each of corruption, embezzlement and, embezzlement and conversion. The charges concern three public buses that prosecutors allege the former ministers converted for personal benefit. Superintendent Michael says his team found one of the buses parked in Casada Gardens, another in Gambles, and one outside defendant Daniel's home in Blue Waters. He says the Casada Gardens bus contained several blue UPP flags, and the one outside Daniel's home had a refrigerator, a television, a pole, and other things. The lead investigator says his team conducted several interviews and later charged the three defendants. During cross-examination, Lovell's attorney, Ernesto Weeks QC, suggested Michael did not do enough to find out what role Antigua and Barbuda's then UN Ambassador John Ash played in allotting the buses for the former ministers. Michael told the court Ash was hard to locate and died before his team could conclude their investigations. Meanwhile, the lead investigator says the probe revealed that South Korea donated the buses to Antigua and Barbuda to be used as school buses. He says he could not determine who entrusted the buses to the former ministers and did not know how the buses left the government's motor pool after they were cleared from the port. Michael claims the defendants benefited personally since the buses, which were each worth over $200,000, became their assets when they were registered in their names. The Calvin Air Foundation and Calvin Air Helicopters are celebrating with a recent medivac patient from Barbuda. Ramona Joseph, who's celebrating her 90th birthday today, was medivaced by Calvin Air Helicopters late last week after developing a serious medical condition requiring surgery. Joseph had been flown to the Celeste Bird Medical Center by Calvin Air Helicopters after doctors on the sister aisle determined that her condition required further intervention by a medical team on the mainland. Joseph had a successful surgery at the hospital for her condition, which could possibly have caused further health issues. The 90-year-old is now recovering and celebrating at home. The foundation, with the assistance of Calvin Air Helicopters, sent a birthday bouquet to the Sister Isle today to help brighten Joseph's day. So on behalf of the Calvin Air Foundation, Calvin Air Helicopters, the Air Group, and Ambassador Calvin Air, we'd like to say happy 90th birthday to Mrs. Ramona Joseph over there in Barbuda. Calvin Air Helicopters had to emergency airlift her to the Celeste Bird Medical Center late last week uh, for a medical procedure. We're very happy to have been able to play our role in getting you to the hospital for that emergency procedure. We are happy that that procedure was successful. And so we're celebrating your 90th with you and we're sending over a bouquet uh, from the Calvin Air Foundation for your 90th birthday with Calvin Air Helicopters. Happy birthday and a speedy recovery. Indeed. Thank you so much for staying with us here to do the ABS Evening News. When we come back, more of the national stories that we've been tracking for you, including this one. 
We report on efforts to revive and sustain interest in the board game of Wari. I'll tell you about how that is being done. And later, an update on how the visit of Canadian press personnel is providing another boost for the recovery in that market and tourism in general. Upcoming on the ABS Evening News, on air and online. Stay with us, please. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Najico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Good morning, Mrs. Philip. I have some meal here for you. Good morning. Thank you. You're welcome. Honey, those LED bulbs that you got from Quality Electrical are really working wonders. Look at how low the bill is. Really? That's what I'm talking about. Need LED bulbs, conduits, switches, fans, light fixtures, generators, meters, breaker panels, electrical tools, or plumbing fittings? Well, we've got them all and so much more. We also offer home automation, installations, and maintenance. Put your mind at ease by letting us do the work for you. Wait, babe, is that the mailman coming to our house? Uh, yeah, it looks so. Drive, drive, drive! So stop running from the mailman and head over to Quality Electrical Sales and Services Limited on Hawkins Drive and in Jolly Harbor or call us at 463-2118. The number one stop for all your electrical needs. We all have dreams, but having a dependable friend who supports them, guides you along the way, and who never gives up on you is just as important. ECAB is more than just your bank. We are that dependable friend who believes in the power of you. Eastern Caribbean Amalgamated Bank. Our future, our bank. Deck with Tex Mex? It's Terminex. Hi. <laughs> the only way to nix it is to Terminex it. Thank you so much for staying with us here in tune with the ABS Evening News. There is a major push to revive interest in the African board game called Wari, which Antiguan Barbuda has dominated since 1997 when the country first held the World Wari Championship. Kim Emanuel Beard spoke with the director of national festivals about the recent collaboration with the Department of Culture to help keep the flame of interest alive. The ECABS with Dadly Wari War is a 10-part series in which four grandmasters of this game will coach 16 beginners to compete against them in the end. The Department of Culture and the Festivals Commission will document this journey and aim to inculcate this tradition not only to sharpen the mind but to also build mathematical skills. The director of Festivals Commission, Petrio Keith, says, 
higher passes in school assessment exams is one of the benefits. I really think it should become a game that you see everybody playing on the, on the corners of the street, you know, the taxi stands in the schools, at your home, because it is a fantastic game. And the, the, the benefits of the game, too, is exceptional because it helps you to think strategically. The teams will be revealed on Saturday on ABS television, which will also broadcast the second episode of the ECAB's Wadadliwari War. O'Keefe adds that Antiguans have beaten masters at this game from Ghana, where it originated and has earned its bragging rights. I went out and I was doing the interviews with the rest of the, the subcommittee and I heard the accomplishments of Antiguans internationally for this mind sport. It, it, it's really mind-blowing. She gives her personal experience in playing Wari and says the game is addictive. Actually, I only tried it once or twice and I actually had to stop because I thought I was good because I understood the basics and a taxi driver told me I was only going to get three scenes, right? And I thought I could play. And trust you me, I only got three scenes, no matter what I did. Saturday's episode will feature a surprise beginner, as well as well-known personalities participating in the game. This is Kim Emanuel Baird, ABS News. The Ministry of Tourism will be carrying out its registration process for all facilities offering room and board to visitors to the island. Residents owning or operating a property geared to accommodating tourists will have from December 6, 2021 throughout January 2022 to be recertified at the Ministry of Tourism headquarters on Queen Elizabeth Highway or individuals can do this also via email to shantia.weatherill at ab.gov.ag. This registration process will be reopened throughout 2022 for new properties to get registered. Proprietors are asked to present the relevant tax ID information along with the name of the property, the owner, its location, accommodation type, and contact number of the person who will facilitate the on-site inspection during phase two of the process. Staying with news about tourism, of course, it is the country's most important revenue earner accounting for the lion's share of gross domestic product. A contingent of press personnel from the Canadian travel market is currently in Antigua. Senior marketing officer for the, Can for the Canada region and the Antigua Barbuda Tourism Authority, Tamika Wharton, says this is said to provide a huge boost to the country's tourism. We have journalists and, and writers and, and, and essayists who would have had a reach in a uh, plus of five million, right? Um, and um, they have, their focus is on wellness, which is a major pillar of Antigua and Barbuda's Tourism Authority. She explains how the press trip will benefit the country's nascent tourism recovery. This is where we set ourselves apart from the other Caribbean destinations. A lot of people tend to, a lot of travelers, right? They tend to group the entire Caribbean into one box. And this is where we differentiate ourselves. Air Canada returned to the shores of Antigua and Barbuda early last month, which provided a further boost to the recovery of the vital tourist industry. Now, Wharton says the numbers since the return of the carrier are encouraging, and she attributes the rising figures to the Tourism Authority's ongoing campaign. What is good is that the Tourism Authority, we worked with Air Canada on a sun campaign only six destinations would have had a, an opportunity to be featured. And with Antigua being one of them front and center, we would have been able to um, re-energize the booking. Stay with us. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to news overseas. One of the stories that we're tracking for you closely, St. Lucia's opposition leader, Alan Chastanay's absence from the House sittings could cost him dearly. We'll explain. And in international news, Europe's leaders struggle to deal with a surge in COVID-19 cases. We'll, give you, we'll take you across the continent of Europe to tell you how they're managing with this fresh surge in cases. Upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online. Please stay with us, please.